boxing, let's turn to our starting grid powered like the champ cars by Ford. On the front row, Paul Tracy had his provisional pole taken away on Friday for blocking. He seized it with a vengeance on Saturday and was the quickest man in the warming wa morning warm-up, going for his second victory in a row on home soil. He'll start next to the man who was the beneficiary of the official's decision on Friday. He is 15 points behind in the championship. He is Bruno Junquera. On row two, fourth quick in the warm-up, equaling the best qualifying performance in the team that is now Airdaz Competition's history, Roberto Moreno, the 0-1 winner here in Vancouver, starts next to Michelle Jourdain for Team Rahal, who went from 18th to 4th here last year, so he knows how to get the job done. On row three, Sebastian Bourdais, leader for the Rookie of the Year. He's been tight, uh, fighting a touch of flu all weekend. He was fifth quick in the morning warm-up. He'll start next to the second fastest man in the warm-up, Patrick Carpentier, who was second here in Vancouver back in 1999. On row four, Alex Tagliani sat on pole here in Vancouver back in 2001. He'll start next to Darren Manning, who is continuing a string of great performances for Walker Racing. And as you see, Jeff Voss in his Dale Coyne Racing Lola managed to get into the wall during the warm-up. Let's get down to Derek Daly in the pit lane. Well, to save the embarrassment of falling over the tires like I did last week, I figured I'd just go ahead and start down here. Paul Tracy has vowed to run every lap flat out just like he did in Toronto. He was the fastest man this morning in the warm-up on full tanks. If Bruno Juncker is to beat him, he has at least to start by doing the same thing. Good to see you keeping safe there, Double D. Moving to row five, Oriol Servia, third quick in the warm-up this morning. We'll start next to rookie Mario Haberfeld in his first visit to the streets of Vancouver. On row six, Tiago Montero crashed in Friday qualifying, but he's been quick all weekend. He'll start next to last year's rookie of the year, Mario Dominguez. On row seven, Captain America Jimmy Vassar and the rest of the American Spirit Team Johansson crew have been struggling this weekend. So has Adrian Fernandez. Problems with the differential all weekend in the Tecate car. On row eight, Mad Max Pappas will start alongside Jimmy Vassar's teammate Ryan hunter Ray, also having a tough first visit to Vancouver. On row nine, Walter Salas of Brazil finished 26th in his only previous race here back in 1997. He'll be starting next to Mexican rookie Rodolfo Levine and scheduled to start on row 10, former Indy Lights alumnus Jeff Boss. But as you saw, his car appeared to be fairly comprehensively damaged in that contact with the wall on the parade lap to Calvin Fish. Bob, as the title contenders line up for today's race, many people believe that this is crunch time in the championship. The guys need to make their moves today. But you couldn't pick a harder racetrack to do that on than the one here in Vancouver. Over the last six years, the attrition rate from contact alone is 8.5 cars per race. It gives a whole new meaning to the word crunch, Bob. Thanks very much, Calvin. And as you've seen, attrition has already taken place. Jeff Boss's car has been towed into one of the safe havens. He is out of the race before it begins. Let's take a look at the track, Scott Pruitt. This is a very difficult track. You've got to put a lot into qualifying. Being, being that said, if you are going to make a move, it'll be right here down in turn one. You've got a good head of steam. You can get the job done. And as well, turn six. Difficult areas to try and make that pass, but those are the only areas. Seven, eight, nine, ten, pretty straightforward. And then right through here, this is a difficult part of the track. You gotta get over the curves and over the curves aggressively. If you don't, you'll end up like Patrick Carpentier yesterday, unfortunately, into the fence. It is one of the bumpiest tracks we visit all year long. Checking our Bridgestone keys to the race, 100 laps scheduled. Ambient temperature right about 80 degrees, a lot hotter on the racetrack though. Our mandatory pit interval, 30 laps, a three-stop race. You may go no farther than 30 laps without pitting and changing all four tires. But it is a fairly wide pit window. It opens as early as lap 10, and you can still get to the end of a 100-lap race with three stops. And now Gualter Salas in the other coin car is in the wall. Coming off turn 11, straight in. Those are the curbs that Scott talked about um, that you bomb straight over. That's really curious. And obviously, he hit the, the left curb with his left rear, and it, with the cold tire temps, got a little bit of rotation. Um, Obviously very embarrassing for these guys to be crashing on the pace laps, but um, that's, that's a, an insight into how cold the tires are and how little grip there is until they get up to temperature. That is the most bizarre thing for two teammates to knock themselves out of the race on the parade lap. Now let's get back to the pit windows. As I mentioned, the early window will open on lap 10. You can still do it on three stops from there, but we expect on this very difficult track to pass 
that most of the leaders will go right to lap 30 before coming in. Now, as a result of those two accidents on the parade laps, it will be a yellow flag start. So we will begin counting laps, and the clock will run while they remove the Dale Coyne cars. There is the man himself with Calvin. Dale, it's hard to believe to see both your cars out before the green flag. Any idea what happened to the boys out there? I think Jeff, he just he was on cold tires. It was his very first go around. He said he just he just lit him up on the cold tires and sliding and, and broke a left rear. And looks like Walter, he, he probably tried to slide it through here to warm him up. As the guys try to slide, as the tires are cold to get some temperature in him, and I think just clipped the curb too hard, snapped him into a wall. So you had an oil leak on that car this morning in the warm-up. Could that have contributed to yeah, the accident? Yeah, that was fixed. That was a line to the turbo. That one, that one was all right. But uh, you know, to have both of them out before the start is. Uh, you think they're both number 13 or something here? So. <laughs> Oh, man. Dale Coyne is a racing survivor and one of the most unperturbable, if that's a good word, word for it, men you will ever meet. There's another look at what happened to Walter Salas. It looks like he might have gotten the rears locked as he was turning in before he hit the curb. It looks like the car was starting to rotate slightly before he hit the curb. Checking our onboard cameras. You are on board with the man at the eye of the storm, Paul Tracy, leading by 15 points in the championship. Spreading out to the six-pack, you see... Adrian Fernandez's machine starting 14th on a track with some very bad memories. A huge crash last year that led to a broken pelvis and other injuries. This is Mario Dominguez, also starting deep in the pack for the Airdes competition team. Alex Tagliani starting in the number seven spot. How about Patrick Carpentier, 